In our modern digital world, it is easy to get to know and stay in touch with more people than ever. However, building true, genuine connections and combating loneliness still remains tricky and a major issue in society. To discuss this, I'm joined by Sierra West, founder of Connect, an app that allows you to connect on the go, wherever you are, based on who you are and what you like without a romantic focus. In this episode, we cover if it's harder for younger generations to develop connections compared with previous generations, the importance of making connections in our everyday lives, how Connect separates itself from the competition, the story behind the app's name and what it means to Sierra, as well as what's on the horizon for Connect. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, As you mentioned, my name is Sierra West and I'm the founder and um, self proclaimed uh, chief connecting officer of Connect App. And essentially what Connect App is, is a new way of thinking about uh, connecting digitally. So we're trying to build an inclusive, safe, community-based and lifestyle platform that's designed to empower and simplify human connection. And our tag line to that is for whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you like, with the emphasis on non-romantic connections. So basically, we formulated this platform under the principles of community, connection, conscientiousness, communication, and we like to every so often talk about celebration as well, because we think that's important. Um, but again, what I, what we're really trying to hone in on is being a new age organization where um, these pillars are not just talked about, but are our critical indicators of success. Our goal is to reconnect you with people um, in person and not keep you on the platform constantly uh, scrolling through content, let's say. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, I have to say, first of all, I really love uh, the mission and the driving force behind this. And I'm super excited to talk about it today. Now for my next question, I want to tell listeners. So the name Connect, it's spelled C-E-N-N-E-C. And I really want to know what's the story behind this name? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Obviously, this is one of the the first questions we get because it has a uniqueness to it. Um, really, the core of it is uh, I wanted a name that was as close to the root purpose of the app as possible. So that being connection, that's the entire point of the app. And we can get into that a little more later. But um, with that word, right, I, I said, you know, how do we create a word that's so simple uh, so representative of what we're trying to do and almost universally understood, like the word connection, obviously we're, we're speaking in um, English uh, language terms here. Mm-hmm. And I sort of wanted to Googleify the name, if, if that's a word, Googleify. And again, make something uh, simple, easy and representative of, of what we're trying to do. So uh, connect, we do pronounce that like connection but with an emphasis on that C-E-N-N-E-C, we thought it was very aesthetically pleasing and also a a palindrome, which is, which is uh, kind of a cool, unique thing. And it's also, if you've seen our logo, it's very representative of our logo as well. Very symmetrical, very aesthetically pleasing, very representative of what the company is about, which is bringing people together and finding that common connection. So with that, uh, Connect was born. Um, But I will say, um, I think it's kind of funny to add that uh, several people say um, Senec when they first see the word, and very understandably so. I think it kind of has, like, looks like um, the start of the word circle or or any other C words that more have that S sound. And for a while, I was worried, um, I guess I could say that, you know, that would be bad for my my brand. And after giving that some uh, thought, I just had this like eureka moment, um, this pop into my head that it actually does not matter entirely because regardless of Senec or Connect, I think the mission is very clear and the representation of what we're trying to do, our logo almost looks like two circles coming together. And if you think about that in terms of your life path and journey, right? We're all just going through our individual uh, journeys, but all those journeys are interconnected in some sort of broader web. So I find it kind of fascinating when people 
um, say Senec, because I'm curious, you know, what's in the effort of connection, right? I'm curious about what they're hearing and what brought them to that conclusion that, you know, that's what it was called. So um, it's been a fun journey so far, but I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm probably one of those people that did see it as connect. I think I understood it like that because I had an understanding of what you folks were about. So I kind of drew the two and two together. And I do also have to say, I do like that, that symmetry in the name. So that really resonates with me. I'm really excited to discuss this a little further because I did actually see an article in the BBC recently um, and it really stuck out for me and I wanted to bring it up with you. Uh, it was titled, Can Gen Z or Z <laughs> make uh, yeah, yeah. friends in the pandemic <laughs> era? Uh, in the article, they stated that Gen Z are now using uh, platforms to build sustainable co uh, close connections in a way that generations before, before them didn't. Um, do you believe that it's harder for younger generations to develop connections compared with previous generations? And if so, like, why do you think that is the case when we're more connected than ever? Yeah, yeah, I love this question. I love it. Um, uh, obviously, it's a it's a uh, complex topic or multifaceted. Um, so we could be talking about this for a very long time, of course. And in no way do I mean to ever you know, generalize because obviously some of those factors depend on things like personality, culture, uh, social context, et cetera. Um, but uh, I do absolutely love giving this um, thought. And, you know, one of the conclusions I came to was that the uh, reach is certainly higher, right? The ability to connect with people in any part of the world, across any topic, across any platform, any digital platform really, is just fascinating. It's a phenomenon, right? Uh, there's huge positives in that. Um, but where uh, the, you know, compensation comes from is the ability to make that uh, true sense of connection. Um, there's a lot of challenges out there around social media creating almost connection overload, which can have the opposite effect, the feelings of the social isolation or loneliness, especially when those virtual connections are replacing or, or detracting from a quality in-person, uh, deeper human connection, deeper than you know some of the superficiality that, that does come with this content. There is research out there that suggests that younger generations do have uh, fewer close friendships than previous uh, generations, but they have more of those casual surface level connections. Um, so quite a quite a um, interesting phenomenon that's that's happening right now. Yeah, it's actually something that's come up on the show before. And even like when I started back in 2018, I think we had an episode talking about the loneliness of um, younger generations. So it's definitely not something that is um, just, I feel like sprung up as the pandemics come around but i would love to know like with so much focus on trying to connect these days and us being more digitally connected are there other companies operating this space in this space and if so like how do you folks differentiate yourselves from the competition yes absolutely um it's a great question and obviously one that comes up um uh top of mind for for a lot of people as well right uh we've been inundated with social connection networking um, et cetera, et cetera, type apps. Again, that's one of the phenomenons of this, of, of today's society is, is the technology that's made this um, possible. So um, the trend that we've observed over the years has been, you know, more on what we just discussed around the Gen Z and, and their ability to connect, where one of the primary indicators is content. We're very rooted in sharing content as, as our means for connecting, which again can have positive and, and negative benefits. So um, the way we're coming in is we are not a content app. Um, we've obviously talked and brainstormed about ways to you know add that in in the future, but the emphasis right now is to enhance your real life, not replace it digitally get you off your phone um, so you can have more of those real, genuine, authentic, human-to-human um, -human connections. Uh, it doesn't have to be physically in person if you're not, you know, one to uh, kind of have that extroverted needing to be around people personality. One of the uh, benefits of our platform is it does have a chat-based connection as well, so you can find that same level of cross-cultural, um, global 
uh, you know, like-minded folks um, wherever they could be. So a big differentiator, um, again, is connection versus content. And then another big differentiator uh, from us between other competitors is that emphasis on connection. So when you think about other apps, um, I think the big elephant in the room is that we've been inundated with dating, with dating apps, right? And that's really created um, some of that superficiality issue I think we've been experiencing is that people are only seeing uh, connections for a certain value and not the quality that humans crave, desire, and arguably need, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that feeling of sense and belonging um, to, to really uh, show up in the community, right? So um, we focus on non-romantic connection. And in our definition, connection can, uh, can, can mean five seconds, five minutes, or five years. Think about in your lifetime, how many times do you make a best friend, right? There's a competitor out there that has a best friends forever app. If you're lucky, you get a few of those in your lifetime, right? A few of those best friends that you obviously cherish uh, so deeply. But as life goes on, uh, the, those best friends can end up on another, uh, the other side of the world. And that in-person time does um, have a tendency to, to decrease. But think about what you did just today. Did you go get a coffee? Did you go for a walk? Did you go to the convenience store? Did you uh, see somebody that had um, nice eyes or a nice smile, right? Um, all these ways in which we're connected on a daily basis that enriches our daily lives and experience. Um, there's a great article that just came out. Um, excuse me, I, for, I forget the source at the moment, but it says one quality conversation a day can be a, a day changing phenomenon, right? Um, can give you that sense of connection and, and belonging that that humans once again uh, need. So we're really emphasizing that daily connection, that uh, when do you need to connect? Where do you need it? How do you need it, right? Creating a digital tool that that enables all that to be possible. So as I've been talking, you probably have been thinking about scenarios where this is useful. We're uh, performing really well in the uh, remote worker traveler market where, again, talking about Gen Z and millennial, right? We're more global than ever. We're, we're travelers, we're explorers. Um, and a lot of people in that uh, uh, bracket talk about wanting the freedom and the ability to travel alone, but not wanting to be alone or have that feeling of loneliness or being alone. So with our app, we're enabling that ability to connect on the go, uh, to connect when you need it. So if I was in uh, Columbia, let's say, Sam, where, where you're located, and I wanted to go for a hike, I'll admit hiking is something that I enjoy, but I definitely get um, some anxiety built about doing such a thing alone where I'm, I'm, I'm far from others and, you know, uh, might not have ways of protecting myself, right, from animals, from others. It doesn't matter, right? It's just something that it invokes that um, little bit of anxiety for me. If I wanted to you know, do that millennial thing, travel to Columbia alone, be a remote worker there, embrace the culture, but I also wanted to experience connection when and where I need it, that's where Connect comes in. That's where we come in. We're really trying to uh, be that niche app that truly amplifies human connection. I get that. That makes a lot of sense to me. And I can honestly say that it, human connection is so essential. I think I do remember seeing one article around the time of the pandemic that said that we crave human connection in the same way that we crave food or water when we go without it. And as someone that is based in like a digital nomad hub here in Colombia, Medellin, I can see that. I can see that how like vital that would be for those that come to this place and want to make those connections. And obviously with my background in psychology, I love the fact that you brought Maslow's hierarchy of needs into this. Uh, so that really <laughs> stuck out for me. Everything you mentioned here sounds so intriguing. And I think that you really do have like a, a very special space in the market. And I want to know like what's next for you folks? What's on the horizon? What are you going to be focusing on as a priority as you move forward? Oh, that's awesome. I just I just love it. I get chills when I hear this because um, something I like to share just about me personally in my journey is that I I wanted to be an entrepreneur for so long that I kind of giggled, I guess, when I heard people 
thought leaders, entrepreneurs, right, sharing sharing their journeys say, you know, they wake up every morning, um, you know, so excited and proud for what they do and, and excited to get out of bed, right? I've struggled to be a morning person throughout my life. So again, that just, that just made me, made me laugh a little bit, but I'm on a personal journey and such where you ask me that question and I just get, I, I get uh, goosebumps because I, I, I am so excited for the future and where uh, this journey could, could take us. Yeah. So, so we've got pages and pages of what we want that feature and functionality to look like from the app perspective, but holistically, right? We have a lot of work to do in being this new age company that I, uh, that I chatted about. We're playing with a lot of exciting models, a lot of ways in which we can uh, create more of that quality uh, type of experience for our community, because that's really how we see it. We don't um, just see it as a user base in a classical company sense. We see it as a, uh, as a community. I really do believe the sky is the limit here. I believe this is the the future of of the definition of company. It's not just the profitability model, but what are what do you actually do to enrich the the community you serve, the community you're part of? Because at Connect, we firmly believe we are all connected in some um, way, shape, or form. And um, the more we you know stay unique and true to our individual selves and our purpose and reason for being but then we're finding how that fits into the broader picture and the the greater good or the 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 greater whole is something that we you know really like to to emphasize awesome well i think that you're indeed right i think there's some exciting times ahead for you folks and if people are listening and they want to get on this app or they want to uh, connect with people um, how can they get involved? How can they get started? Or how could they even reach out to you if they wanted to uh, keep up with the work that you're doing, Sierra? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, great news is that Connect um, in the you know first initial form will be out on the app stores um, very, very soon. Um, we have a little email entry form on our website at connect, C-E-N-N-E-C.com, where uh, you can add your email if you want to join the community now and get up to date on some of the um, uh, communications that that we'll be sending out. In addition, uh, please you know feel free to reach out on on Instagram as our our main uh, social platform at the moment. We're we're qu- quickly expanding, but um, we're at Connect App um, C E N N E C App A P P. Find us there, and also hello at connect.com is our email. So very open doors. Um, please feel free to connect. <laughs> uh, the, the hashtag we're, we're going with is let's connect. Um, we're hoping that resonates with a, with a lot of people. Um, so let's connect, right? Uh, uh, reach out, get in touch, stay social, right? Let's keep this ball moving. I think um, COVID was a huge wake up call for a lot of people about, you know, the importance of community and in our society. So I'm let's keep this momentum. Let, let's keep connecting together. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I really do wish you the best of luck and I hope you can make as many connections as possible um, with your work. And thanks again for joining me today. Thank you, Sam. This was so much fun and, and great, great conversation, great topics. I hope this is the type of conversation we can, you know, uh, enrich the world with. So thank you so mm-hmm. much. Growing a company has many hurdles, from securing funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search. Each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing, and that is where our sponsor, Publicize, comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds businesses' online presence and gets high-quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. What's more, listeners of BrainSpike Back can find the tools and resources they need to overcome common hurdles that many startups face when trying to generate long-term growth by visiting publicize.co slash bbb. That's publicize.co slash bbb.
That is it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And if you have benefited from today's episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast as these reviews really help us grow the show. You can also follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Brain Spike back and you will find us. We hope you join us for more episodes in the future. And until then, take care. Disclosure. This episode contained a client and a Spacio portfolio company.